The first question that most people ask for older games is, how well has it held up? Unfortunately, most games do not hold up to this standard very well, but there are a few exceptions to that general rule. Games that overcame their system limitations to produce incredible experiences of gaming that are still highly playable many years later. Perhaps no game fits this ideal of gaming better than the highly regarded classic Chrono Trigger, which is why I ended up playing it over 20 years after its initial release and enjoyed it immensely. Here's why I think you should do the same. Chrono Trigger is a JRPG developed by Square, which would later merge with Enix to form Square Enix. The game was made specifically by the Dream Team of designers. It was a melding of the minds behind perhaps the two most popular JRPG franchises of the time, and even arguably now, Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. It initially released on the SNES in 1995, a PlayStation port happened in 1999 or 2001 for the West, and an enhanced re-release came to the Nintendo DS in 2008. The DS version is the version I played. Since then, ports have also happened for mobile devices and for the PC, bringing the game to more audiences, albeit with some complaints about porting issues. The game, at basically all stages of its release and re-releases, has garnered incredible praise from all corners of the gaming market. The game had great sales in Japan and decent sales outside of Japan, and the praise and success has been coupled with a lasting legacy of games since then. This legacy has been so extensive that it comes right back around and inspired future entries of Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, the progenitors of Chrono. The premise of the game is that the protagonist, Chrono, or whatever you name him because you can name every party member in Chrono Trigger yourself, wakes up to go to a festival, meets a friendly girl named Marley, and then gets sucked into time travel adventures with Marley and Luca, Chrono's brilliant inventor childhood friend. Over time and space, they meet more party members and begin to learn about a huge threat to the entire world in all time periods. They team up together to change history on both the large and small scale, depending on side quests you do. Mysteries are unraveled, enemies are fought, cats are collected, and eventually you reach the end. But which end? Chrono Trigger has 13 endings, 14 if you're playing the DS mobile or PC version. An impressive feat given the capabilities of the time, and a major reason for playing through multiple times and making different choices on how to fight the final boss. Most of the endings involve how and when you fight that final boss on your New Game Plus run. The story is quite good, with several poignant emotional moments for basically the entire cast. There are clever twists, funny situations, and surprisingly deep lore for the world. It seriously has most of the elements I look for in a great story, and the characters are the linchpin of that connection. The characters in the party are all deep, with significant portions of the game devoted to each of them and their personal struggles. The time travel base of the game could have caused many problems for the designers, but each time in the game is uniquely different, and the timeline itself is fairly easy to follow without having too many plot holes. Not that there aren't any. The story is one of the highest praised aspects of the game, and I believe rightly so. Early video games may have been restricted in ways modern ones aren't, but that couldn't stop this game from having a compelling narrative to follow. Gameplay-wise, you navigate the world map by walking around in an overworld map until you reach major locations. Castles, towns, forests, dungeons, etc. Once you reach that location, you need to go into it to move past or through it. This is where you directly interact with the world, where you can buy items, find and complete quests, and of course, fight enemies. Enemies are displayed on the map, so no random encounters in this game, although there will occasionally be ambushes. Coming into contact with enemies initiates proper battles, and the transition is smooth, no separate battle screen at all. Combat gameplay is done in an ATB system, or active time battle system. Characters make actions based on a personal timer displayed in the screen with their HP and MP. Once the bar is filled, they can attack or use an item or use a tech. 
Honestly, this system isn't my favorite because I feel stressed from not being able to hit buttons fast enough and dying because I couldn't get in my next move in time. Although there is an option you can turn on in the game that helps with this by pausing the game as you select moves. That though, may be a personal issue, but if you find those systems stressful, the combat may not be as fun as it could be. For attacks, you have the standard physical attack, which is about as self-explanatory as you can get, and other skills which are called techs. Techs are specialized abilities to each character. Some can be attacks, some can heal, and well, you get the picture, they do a variety of things. These moves, though, require MP, magic points, to use, so you need to manage your use of text to make sure you don't run out unexpectedly. One of the really cool things about the text system is that if you have two or three characters who can all attack at the same time, you can combine their skills into powerful attack or support skills. These double and triple techs will be absolutely necessary once enemies gain in difficulty. And really, do you need any excuse to use these powers anyway? They're really fun abilities. As an RPG, your characters level up, gain skills, and can be equipped with various items. Usually, I don't feel the need to discuss this portion of management in these videos unless the system is really good or really bad. For Chrono Trigger, though, the items actually played a significant role in the way I played the game, accessories specifically. These items were the most important way for me to vary up the gameplay within my party, although enemy variety is fairly good at helping with that throughout the game, forcing you to adapt to different challenges presented by various foes. It's not a huge part of the game, but it helped me feel like the party was my party, and that connection is always fun to create. Out of combat gameplay is pretty bare bones, but there is some puzzle solving in various areas in the game. Some of the puzzles are for advancing in a dungeon and necessary for the main story, and others are simply side quests. Starting from early game until the very end of the game, these puzzles are littered around the world. For the most part, they're fun, making you think without making you so frustrated to the point of grabbing a guide rather than solving it yourself. It's a fun diversion of the game without overshadowing the main focus of the story and gameplay. Visually, the game shows its age, but the gameplay art is quite nice and the characters well animated. The cutscenes and art may be aged in comparison to today, but it's in the way that makes the game endearing rather than frustrating or disappointing. The music though is solid in the entirety and fits the game well. It has a good variety in its tracks, some evoke mystery, some heart-pounding excitement, and others quiet tranquility. This is a game soundtrack that I really enjoy in its current form, and also would love to hear a modern remix of, if Square Enix is ever inclined to make one. In summary, the game has its era-style presentation, and yet it's hard to say the game suffers for it, to the point that one might say the exact opposite. One of the best parts of playing Chrono Trigger for me was as a piece of gaming history. A game that introduced important concepts, refined others, and simply did most everything really well. From the narrative design of the silent protagonist and double and triple text, to New Game Plus and the careful use of time travel in the story, there's so much detail and strong ideas contained in Chrono Trigger. This game, though, is an enjoyable experience, whether you're playing it as I did as a piece of gaming history, or as a regular game you just happened upon. This game is highly regarded in many gaming circles for a reason, and is a widely loved game for players of various skill levels. Play it for its amazing story, or its engaging gameplay, or its brilliant music, or one of the many other aspects that has kept this game fresh for gamers even after 20 plus years. If this video has piqued your interest, go ahead and play Chrono Trigger. It is definitely worth a try at the very least. This has been Comrio. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, happy gaming.